Okay, so um, what we're going to do is that if you could look at the the, the actual table you have to fill, um, we'll we'll go back to that. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this like a teaching question, right? And just do it all. And I think that's how you should treat it because I think if you start trying to just figure out what's going on individually, I think that might take you more time. I think you should just go ahead and just calculate all the variances and then just pick them up and just put them in, right? So let's just start off with materials and just just park your answers once you've found them. Right, so this is usual. I think almost a bit of a fair question in that it feels a little bit like the earlier one we just did. So not, not a bad question. So this is your budget. And like I said before, this is what matters. This information here is what matters. Yes, because this helps you find out what the, what the cost is per unit. And that's how, well, again, whatever you're comfortable with, I think as long as you're arriving at those answers. Because you see here, you know that to produce 3,000 kilograms, oh, sorry, 3,000 units, right? It says 3,000 units, you need 6,000 kilograms. So that means that to make each unit, you will need two kilograms, right? So you know your standard situation is two kilograms. Now you also know that these 6,000 kilograms, you're budgeted to spend 21,000. So the question here is, therefore, what is the cost of one kilogram? And the cost of one kilogram must be, yes, 21,000 divided by 6,000. Right? And that is 21,000. We'll do them step by step. 21,000 divided by 6,000. That's three pound fifty, three pound fifty. So you have your starting point of finding out anything you you need. So I'm just going to write three pound fifty, uh, just because of space and two kilograms, and then just clean all this out. I mean, this is recorded, so you can see what I've just done. I'm just going to do that. Okay, so. What was I talking about? I was saying that we need two kilograms and that's three pound fifty per kilogram. And I'm just gonna draw my table here. I know it's three pound fifty here, and I'm expected to use two kilograms for every unit. Then let's jump in. What actually happens is that you make three thousand two hundred units. So if you're making three thousand two hundred units, I'm expecting you to use two times 3,200, which is I'm expecting you to use 6,400 kilograms. That's what I'm expecting you to use. I'm going to change my pen color. So what actually happens here is that you, according to the question, you actually use um, 6,000 kilograms. Interesting. So you actually use 6,000 kilograms. So what you have here, I mean, I will do all the variances just because, and you actually spend um, £3.50. So from a materials variance point of view, let's just look at that first. Um, we have here a saving, sorry, yeah, you use 6,000 kilograms, but we were really expecting you to use um, 6,400 kilograms. So from an, a material efficiency or usage point of view or efficiency variance or usage is what they write but it doesn't really matter you have a 400 kilogram it's favorable of course right and then we are costing that at three pounds 50 right so 400 400 times three pound 50 and that's 1400 so your material variance is 1000 your material usage variance, yes, is 1,400 favorable. Now, you actually did use, right? I mean, the question here is that you actually did use £3.50 as well, right? Because that didn't change. You, you spent 21,000 on 6,000 kilograms. So there is no, there is just no um, rate variance because even if they it's not and because it's the same thing these two these two are exactly the same that's my, my purple one yes let me go back to my custom my custom here that's you doing that the same thing and that's the red one doing exactly the same thing so there is no material certain um, price variance there's nothing so the total variance of course must be the two together which is 1400 and um, zero, which is why we have here 1,000, 
four hundred. I mean, I don't. I'm. Not, I, I'm just doing this now. I'm just seeing it. So I'm showing you that. You, I think the best thing is to just do it. So I'm just going to write my answers here under materials. Um, total variance is one thousand four hundred favorable. Um, material variance here is um, material um, efficiency or material usage. Let's use you so we don't mix it up with labor. Material usage variance was 1,400 favorable, and material price variance was zero, right? Now I can clean this up because I need the space. <laughs> right, so let's just do all of that, and I will come back and use these, these graphs, but let's just clean that off. And that's the the first plan. That's the idea. Okay. Right, let's look at labor and just walk through exactly the same process for labor. It means that we can always go back and put our figures in. So labor, we require, like I said here, you want to make 3,000 units and you need, or the idea is we require you to use 1,500 hours. You can see it there. So therefore, to make one unit, we are expecting you to therefore use 1,500 over 3,000, which is 0 0.5 hours. That's the plan. So I'm expecting you to use 0 0.5 hours to make each unit of labor. Now, you intend on buying these 1,500 labor hours for 15,000 pounds, which means that for one hour, you're intending to spend 10 pounds. So that's the plan, isn't it? Divide that by 1,500 and you have 10, don't you? So that is 10 pounds. So I can now clean that up to give myself space. Yes, clean that out. That's 10 pounds. And so therefore, <clears throat> let's work this. Um, we have a scenario where you are making 3,200 units. If you are making 3,200 units, I expect you to use 0 0.5 times 3,200, and that comes to 0 0.5 times 3,200. I expect you to use 1,600 hours. I expect you to use 1,600 hours. And you have used 1,920 hours. That's what you've done. You've done 1,009. So from an efficiency point of view, I can just analyze that first over here. So you have done an extra 320 hours than you should have, 320 hours, right? That's the difference between these two. This is adverse, right? So of course, measuring this is the 320 extra hours that you have done at adverse, of course, at 10 pounds, which is 3,200 adverse. So your labor efficiency variance, your labor efficiency variance is 3,200 adverse. That's the first thing. Right. Now let's look at your rate variance. You, again, what's interesting here was that you have spent on each of your hours. I mean, this is what you actually did. So you should have spent 10 pounds. So 10 times one. So you should have spent 10 times 1920, which is 19,200. That's what you should have spent. Um, and what you did you spend? You did spend 19,200. So there is no, there is no um, labor rate. The labor rate variance is equal to zero. That's why you can see this is zero. This is the, the labor rate variance. So the total variance, of course, must be 3,200 adverse if we were actually working that out. But we're doing it. We're just writing everything out, right? That's important because that's what actually that's what you you should have done and that's what you did do right so that's worked out as it is right okay great let's so we've got those answers there right i hope that's not there's nothing confusing there you could you in fact it's not, the thing about these things is you could have said oh Ian, how much did i spend an hour you could have done that and you'd have got 10 and you'd have said well 10 is 10 that you know it doesn't matter how whether you're going forward or backwards or totals as you wish just make sure you're arriving whatever works for you make sure you arrive at those answers okay right um let's let's 
let's just do this. Um, let's come over here. Um, that's all right. Let's just do the um, um, variable overheads. Let's do the variable overheads. One second. Let's just do that um, very quickly. Let's just give ourselves, let's clean this up a little. Let's tidy everything up here. Okay, right. So what's going on We're here? We're going through exactly the same process. We, we, in, in the previous question, we saw this, the, the, the point that variable overheads mirror their labor counterpart very closely. And what we see here is that you have variable overheads of 1,500. So the whole idea is that we are expecting to use variable overheads of 1,500 to make 3,000 units. And in very like fashion, therefore, for one unit, I'm expecting you to use um, divide this by 3,000, of course, 0 0.5 variable hours in with in fashion with with um, with with labor but there's the difference the only difference really is cost so for these 1500 hours i'm expecting you to pay 3000 pounds if you like and therefore each of those hours therefore really is really costing about 3000 over 1500 which is 2 pounds isn't it so right because one hour if 1500 hours cost 3000 one hour costs 2 pounds so that's that so let's come over here Right. So what am I? What have I really done here? Where I've said you need zero point five hours, and it each should be at two pounds. So let's just clean that. Give ourselves. We, I can get rid of this just in case I need some space up there. Let's get rid of that. So that's what I need. Two pounds for every variable overhead. Yes, two pounds for every variable overhead hour. And then what? What am I going with now? So it says that you did three thousand two hundred units. So three thousand two hundred units. Three thousand two hundred units means that you should be. Um, using 1600 hours you did 1920 hours again notice how this is very much closely related to labor but i'd like to do it separately so that you never get mixed up there's no problem in that so in terms of efficiency labor rate efficiency what we have is 320 hours um excess 320 hours um um uh, adverse at two pounds at two pounds an hour and that takes us to 640 adverse right and six so i'm just going to do this over here for this was for so for variable overheads the total i'll come to that in a second total i don't know but i can tell you at least immediately variable overheads um efficiency variance is 640 adverse i can tell you that let's look at the um let's look at the um uh, price or the rate variance so you should you should have spent two pounds on these 19 20 hours that you did you should have spent two pounds on them and that should take you to zero four two times nine is 18 one two times one that's what you should have spent the question here is how much did you spend you spent three thousand you spent three thousand four hundred and 56 and that gives you a favorable variance of 384 favorable and they've calculated that for you but you couldn't have known that by looking you couldn't have known those favorable or adverse which is why i think this is slightly flawed when i say flawed this question is they might have just asked you to calculate everything um but i i suppose it does help with confirmation so your um um variable overhead price um um or rate variance rate price variance or rate variance or whatever you want to call it rate variance is 384 favorable right so you have two variances you have 640 that's adverse and a rate variance that's favorable so the difference of course will give you your overall variance so let's just do that that's 640 minus 384 384 and that's 256 adverse 256 adverse right cool great stuff and then um oh they did give it to us oh there you are they're both there right see that okay so finally it's finally let's finish off with a fixed overhead fixed overhead variant so you can just go back in and just put all of this in in the um schedule um once you're happy with the, the important thing is you know how we're arriving at these answers right okay so Right, so 
with our fixed overheads, what do we have? This is the budget. I mean, I couldn't, this couldn't be more, you know, I've talked about this before. This is the budget. Your budget is £9,000. <clears> Your production volume, your budgeted volume is 3,000 units. So you could argue this fixed overhead absorption rate, you should have left things alone, really. Fixed overhead absorption rate is 9,000 divided by three. So you intend on putting three pounds in your accounts for every unit that you produce. That's the plan. That's the plan. So um, this is the original budget. So what happens is that you end up making 3,200 units. I'm just going to make my line again. So what's ended up happening is you have put into your accounts 3 times 3,200, which is 9,600, isn't it? You put in 9,600 pounds. So this is what actually happened, the 10,000. And again, using my different pen colors, let's just do that. Like I said to you, the first thing you really want to do is that you want to bring this back down to the actual budget and the actual budget was 900 sorry 9000 so you've put in 600 too much so you're bringing this down so what we have is a favorable um fixed overhead i'm just going to use a different pen color for that um so your your volume variance is a 600 pound favorable journal to bring this down to 9000 then what you're going to have is an expenditure variance, which is sort of saying, well, listen, what is what actually happened? Well, what actually happened was a cost of 10 grand. And so we're taking this back up from here. So you actually have a 1,000 pound adverse expenditure variance. And so your total variance, which would have been, what would have happened was you'd have, you'd have put this through as normal because you're journaling it and you said, oh, there's a difference of 400. We need to increase the actual variance. So your total variance, your fixed, your total variance is what we call total variance is, is 400 adverse. I mean, it's 400 adverse because of your journaling. But if you're breaking down this 400, so in effect, what is this six, what is this 400 made up of is what we're really asking. 400 adverse is made up of an expenditure variance of 1000 adverse and a volume variance yeah, and a volume variance of 600 favorable that's the relationship between these these three so you can just take all this and plug it in and plug it into the the um the, the question below let's just go there and see and that's what they're asking for and, ah and so of course there's the very first bit here the standard marginal cost of production so let's just tackle that i think we can we can go to the um initial pay we can go back here and tackle that now what is the standard initial cost of um, initial cost of production. The total cost of production, guys, is forty-eight thousand. Oops, sorry, it's forty-eight thousand. So forty-eight thousand is being used to produce three thousand units. So if forty-eight thousand is being used to produce three thousand units, the the real the 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 cost of making each unit, if you like, is sixteen pounds, right? That's sixteen sixteen pounds. And if that's 16 pounds to make 3,200 units, I'm really flexing my budget here. That's what they're asking for. So 3,200, 3,200 times 16 is equal to 51,200. So your standard starting point is that you're expecting to spend 51,200 on this. So your answer that you're going to put in here to start off with is always based on um, it's 51,200 here. And then you just work everything out as we have done um, going along. Cool. Great stuff. I hope that's been, that's been helpful.